I know things are hard. Don't judge yourself for it. I know things are sad, especially when you're not with your loved ones on the holidays. friends, it's Ra. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Here's something typical. I made this video yesterday. CJ kept jumping in and out of the frame. He was actually in the bath at one point. Then he gets out of the bath and he tries to get on camera, which we're not doing. So I'm making it again today, which I think it's better. Obviously there aren't going to be as many distractions, but I'm kind of disappointed because my hair is slicked back in this bun. And yesterday I was having a really good hair day but it's life. I just kind of wanted to talk to you about thoughts over the past couple of days, week or so, help you in areas where you struggle in your own life. So this could be for anybody who is kind of depressed, especially when holidays are approaching, during the holidays, when you have a loved one inside, and then also when they are released. This is dealing with a little bit of post-incarceration syndrome, but really anybody who's anybody, <laughs> especially in 2024, where we're dealing with a whole bunch of different struggles. Anybody can, I think, take away from this. Probably like a week or two ago, we signed up for an egg hunt at the gym where we go. They're doing an egg hunt for the, head, for the kids for Easter. I was really excited when I saw it. We don't have any family here. We don't have any plans for Easter. I wanted to do something special for CJ. I was going to do an egg hunt in the house. I'm still going to do an egg hunt in the house, but I thought it was so fun that he could be with other kids. There's going to be face painting. It's going to be like a whole little Easter type of carnival for the kids. So we signed them up for it. And when you take them to the egg hunt, they have to, each child has to bring their own Easter basket. That day we went to the dollar store and there were a cute, a few little uh, plastic Easter baskets kind of just look like buckets. And the only one that I thought was absolutely adorable was like this little burlap it was supposed to be a bunny, like the face of a bunny, and there it had ears at the top and like a little handle. The ears and the inside of the basket were pink gingham. I still got it because I'm like, well, I can make it work. You know, I could put something blue in there. I could put some blue grass, but I don't like any of the, the other buckets. So I sent a picture to my sister and I was like, is this too girly for him? And she sends me a picture of the exact same Easter basket that she bought for her daughter. And she said the same thing. She's like, no, just put blue grass or something in there. It's not that big of a deal. It's an Easter basket. I'm just being a crazy, like first time mom of a toddler. The next day I go back to the dollar store with CJ because I want to get stuff to fill his Easter basket and to fill the eggs when we do our egg hunt. Just so happens, this is a total side note, but it just so happens that on the shelf where the Easter baskets were, this same exact little burlap bunny ears Easter basket but the gingham was blue, not pink. It was not there the day before and it's the only one on the shelf. So I grabbed it and I made the pink one. I put a flower pot inside it. It's very cute, I'll put a picture. My sister said it was Martha Stewart and I'm like, Martha Stewart, the Timu version of Martha Stewart because it's from the dollar store, but that's a different story. So I'm walking through the dollar store and I'm grabbing stuff for the Easter basket and I went down the aisle that has dishware, you know, just kind of like kitchen stuff. And I saw the cutest little chargers that go under the plates. Now I'm not fancy. I didn't know the word charger until my sister's wedding. They were talking about the chargers and how beautiful they were and they were getting them from the dollar store. And they were this beautiful silver. Next to them were dinnerware, that type of stuff. And I saw the most beautiful dishes that matched and they're $1.25 each. So I grabbed two chargers and I grabbed two dinner plates and I'm like, I'm gonna make a beautiful tablescape, literally from the kitchen aisle at the dollar store. I'm on Pinterest, like beautiful tablescape for Easter. So I grabbed a couple things. I'm getting really excited. Like it's gonna be beautiful. Like I'm getting in touch with my creative side. I'm a left-handed, right-brained, one of those. So I'm leaving the dollar store really excited about this. And all of a sudden it just hits me, right? It takes over my body and I'm like, what? It's just two of us. Adam doesn't even love celebrating the holidays. He honestly, it's, I think it's an, I, I know because he's had this conversation with a friend who was also incarcer incarcerated with him. Why can't I say that word today? In front of me, as well as like, this has been things that I've talked about with other people who have experienced re-entry coming out of prison. And they just don't really, they're not into celebrating holidays. And I get it because it's a coping mechanism. I believe it's a coping, me coping mechanism while you're inside of prison, like to shut yourself off from holidays and birthdays and special occasions because you're stuck in there, right? And you're not celebrating with your family and they're outside on their own and blah, blah, blah. And when Adam was inside, he did very well. He would always send me cards and gifts, what he, what he could send me. And he would call me on the holidays of my birthday, but I think he did it more for me because he knew I loved celebrating. And I'm like really into it with my family. And now with CJ, I want to make it really special, memorable, 
for him and relive my youth. So I'm getting in my head and believe me, he has a good time when we're doing it, but he would be equally as happy sitting in front of his computer working all day because he's just not into celebrating the holidays. So there's that, right? And then also for my lovely friends who have a loved one who's still incarcerated, a lot of times it's really hard to celebrate the holidays and to feel like whole during the holidays because your loved one is inside. And I remember the very first time this hit me when Adam was, when we first got in touch and, and started our relationship was actually Easter Sunday, believe it or not, like full circle moment. I was at my sister's house and I'm from a big Italian family and we always got together on the holidays and it would be like brunch at mom's at oh, like 11 o'clock and we'd stay there all morning at my mom's and we'd go over to my sister's for dinner or we'd do something else for dinner. Like it was like all day we would eat tons of delicious food and we would sometimes we would play games and sometimes we would drink wine and it would just be so much fun so i'm at my sister's house and i was just really really feeling the loss of adam and a significant other like i'm looking around and all my siblings are there with their significant others i'm so happy for them and like their kids and I, at the time adam's a lifer so i don't think i'll ever be able to have that experience but i'm still trying to like enjoy the moment but it was just really sucking it out of me like i had no joy left in me i was really in the throes of like getting used to being in a prison relationship. So I went upstairs, didn't say anything to anybody, but I went upstairs and I was laying in my nephew's bed and I was just kind of like fighting back tears, maybe cried at some point, I don't remember. The next thing I remember though is my sister, she must have asked somebody like, where's Ro, where's Ro, where's Ro? And everyone's like, I don't know. So she went upstairs to look for me and I remember her opening the door and the look on her face was like, oh, she's like, are you okay? Cause I must've just looked so upset, so distraught. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'll be down in a minute. So I collect myself and I go down and got through the rest of the day, but driving home from her house was a 20 minute drive. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't do this, right? Like I don't want to spend holidays like this because we're not guaranteed another day, let alone another holiday. Like I can't sit and just be miserable because he's inside and in my head, like he's miserable. I can't do that. I have to learn how to celebrate now while we're apart. That was something I always wanted to pass along to strong prison wives and families and other people in my position, whether that be prison wife, a long distance relationship, somebody who's ill. So yes, you might not be bubbly and at the top of your game every single holiday, every single celebra celebration, every single birthday, but to try to reframe it and flip it, find the positive, grateful for being there in the moment and not in a situation where you're miserable. I remember specifically one time at Strong Prison Wives and Families, one of the women told me, she's like, how do you expect me to celebrate when my husband is rotting in a jail cell? And I kind of was, I wasn't harsh, but I had to give her a reality check. I said, does your husband have MRSA? And she's like, what? And I'm like, the only way that he would literally be rotting in a jail cell is if he had a condition that was rotting his body. While I respect and understand and empathize with what you're saying, empathize because I was in her shoes with a lifer at that point. So I wasn't being like judgmental, like I'm better than you because I've been accused of saying I'm better than you since my husband's been home. But here's a side note. Now this is like Jersey row coming out side note. If I didn't want to help anybody, and if I did think that I was better than anybody in this situation in my life, why would I continue to make videos for prison life? Let's just think about that for a second. The math ain't mathing on that one. Just because I feel the need to make a disclaimer now that I was accused of that. But anyway, so I said to her, I was like, why well, I understand and I empathize and I completely wholly, like my heart hurts for you. It's a mindset. Your husband's not rotting. Unfortunately, you're separated. Unfortunately, you can't spend the holiday together because you think he's miserable and he might not be miserable in there. Believe me. Yes, it's not fun to be away from your wife, your children, your family, the outside free world during a holiday, but they celebrate in their own way. Adam would have, you know, he had his group of guys that would get together and they would make food and no, it wasn't anything like the food we have out here. And it wasn't anything like the celebrations we have out here. But what I'm saying is he might not necessarily be miserable and rotting. We know he's not rotting unless he's got MRSA or something that's rotting his body in his jail cell. And that's the mindset. That's the flip that you have to do. I'm going to be grateful for what I have. So now let's fast forward back to outside the dollar store. I have my tablescape stuff. I have all this stuff for the Easter hunt for CJ. And I'm like getting in my head. Like I don't have my extended family. We used to have so much fun. This is miserable. And I stopped myself in my, myself in my tracks. I can't be mad at myself for being human 
and having that thought, right? Like I can't yell at myself and be like, you should be grateful and appreciative for every single thing you have. And how dare you ever have a normal human thought and get sad on your worst, most hormonal day that you're not with your extended family and you don't have plans for Easter. But how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Always be grateful. That's not human. You have emotions, but what you can do not judge yourself, but just get yourself out of that thought. So I stopped myself and I was like, I get it. I'm not with my extended family. I haven't seen them in a while, but I do have my immediate family and I have the family that I fought so long to have. So what? I'm not going to be with my extended family in New Jersey. So what? That I don't have so many friends around me yet because I'm in a new location coming over to celebrate with me. But you know what? One day I might. So today isn't the day, but how am I going to celebrate today? And then I went on Pinterest when I got home and I got really excited to like look up re recipes that I'm going to make for me, for Adam, for CJ, and how grateful I am that I could do that for the family that I have with me now. And if you're thinking like, screw you girl, you have what I want please know that I was in your shoes for 11 years. He was on his 20th year of a life prison sentence. So I can say this, I can say this from my perspective, I was there. I didn't have any appeals. I didn't have anything that could get him out. Obviously things changed because I'm here, but always, always in those moments, I chose to get upset if I got upset and feel those feelings, but then flip it and be grateful. And that's what I did in this instance. So I started to get excited about it. And I'm like, you know, one day I might have a house where I can invite people over to, and maybe I can invite my family here. Maybe I'll be in a position where I can buy all their plane tickets here. Today is not that day. So I'm going to be, have fun. I'm going to make breakfast. I'm going to make the brunch. I'm going to do Pinterest, right? I'm going to set my table and I'm going to take pictures. And I'm going to take all these pictures for him for his baby book. And I started getting in that feeling of like, this is going to be fun and we're going to celebrate and I'm going to enjoy every minute of this holiday with the people that I love the most in life. Well, let me tell you, I got myself in that mindset of gratitude and excitement for what I do have after having that human experience and that moment where I felt down for a second, didn't judge myself for it, didn't get mad at myself, didn't yell at myself, wasn't mean to myself, just changed my mindset. So that's like, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning, five, six at night, Adam's here, we're eating dinner and he's on the phone with somebody and she goes, what are you guys doing Easter morning? And he was like, we don't have any plans. Well, he looks at me like, do you want to do the egg hunt? And I'm like, no, see what she wants to do. She goes, why don't you guys come over for brunch? So he looks at me and I'm like, yeah, he goes, she goes, maybe we'll do an egg hunt for CJ. Like, we'll just get together. It'll be fun. Her and her husband will be there. Their kids are older, living in different areas of the country. I got excited, right? So he's like, we could do our brunch on Saturday, the egg hunts on Saturday. I'm like, that's perfect. I'll do my table, all that on Saturday. And we'll go to their house on Sunday. Sunday evening, we'll do dinner. Not an hour later. <laughs> He's texting back and forth with a friend for about something work related. And then she's like, hey, what are you guys doing for Easter? Why don't you come over for dinner? We're having a whole bunch of people be here at three o'clock if you can make it. I'm saying that to say, I switched my attitude. I went from feeling sorry for myself and sad and depressed in a situation where I had no reason to be. Well, stop. I had a reason to be right here. We're talking ourselves out of it. I did have a reason to be, and I don't want to judge that. I miss my family. That's normal. But I talked myself out of, out of that. I worked through that with myself. And I got in an attitude, sorry, cliche, silly phrase, but it's true, attitude of gratitude. And I just started noticing the blessings versus noticing the lack. And look what happened. Exactly what I wanted, I got. We got invitations. We're going to be with people. We're going to be celebrating the holiday. We're still going to do our thing. I'm still going to have my table. And I'm still going to, I don't know why the table means so much to me. I guess it's because of what I found at the dollar store. I've never been like, we need a tablescape. I didn't even know the word tablescape until that day in the dollar store in the aisle with the plates and the kitchen stuff. And I Googled on, Googled on Pinterest. Isn't that funny how we say that nowadays? I searched on Pinterest, um, something like table decor ideas for Easter and the word Easter tablescape came up and now it's in my vocabulary. And I feel like Martha Stewart, the team version, but still I'm going to have all of that on Saturday. And for some reason that was really important to me this year and we're going to go with it. So what I want to pass along to you guys is just that. I know things are hard. Don't judge yourself for it. I know things are sad, especially when you're not with your loved ones on the holidays. Don't judge yourself for it. But how can you have those feelings, feel them, how can you include your loved one in the holiday if they're gone? I have a whole video about that that I did like during Christmas 
that season one year, what can they do? Can they maybe call during the Easter egg hunt and the kids can talk to them while they're doing it? Can they be part of the Easter egg hunt? Like, could they give the clues as to where the eggs are hidden? Something like that. Could it be more like a scavenger hunt than an Easter egg hunt? Could they call and say grace if you're religious? What can you do? Or if you're not, uh, if you don't celebrate Easter, like your spring holiday or whatever holiday that you want to celebrate, something like that. And then if you don't have access to them, if they can't call, if they don't want to call, if they're on lockdown, something like that, what can you do in the moment? Feel your sadness, feel the lack, but then how can you reframe that and flip your attitude and do something special and fun that makes yourself happy? Not just for the kids, not just for the family, which of course, as a mom, if you have children, that's what you want to do, but also add yourself into that. If that means like self-care, that means getting up early before you hide the Easter eggs, just to have a cup of coffee with yourself, take some deep breaths sitting outside, whatever that is. I actually, now that I'm talking through this, have developed this whole new morning routine because I was jumping out of bed, getting CJ situated and hopping right on my work computer. That wasn't working for me. So now I'm making sure I'm getting up an hour before work, doing this little morning routine that has been helping me like health wise, mental health wise. So if you want me to share that, I'll do that with you. Just let me know in the comments. Also, if you made it this far, let's do something fun to reframe, to flip. So I know who made it to the end of this video. You're my ride or die. Put an Easter funny emoji in the comments below and let me know that you're still here. And then also let me know what you're grateful for right now in this season so we could start doing that attitude of gratitude. I love you guys so much. I hope this helped in some way for you in your life and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.